Solaris Blue Raven. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Raven Star's Witching Hour. I'm your host and head witch, Miss Solaris Blue Raven, at the helm this evening. I want to give a shout out to everybody at Revolution Radio, staff producers, listeners, chat room, and thank everyone for tuning in tonight. We are 100% listener supported, so if you like what you're hearing, please click on the donate button. We appreciate your support and thank you for any contribution you can make to this excellent station. And I am no longer accepting any calls or questions tonight via email during my show. This might change from week to week depending on the guests and the time constraints mainly. If I have extra time, I'll open up the lines, okay? And you are listening to Studio A. And my special guest this evening is Laura Magdalene Eisenhower. Laura is a global alchemist, intuitive astrologist, ascension guide, and is the great-granddaughter of Dwight David Eisenhower. She is on a profound mission to reveal our true origins connected with the Magdalene and Gaia Sophia energies of love and wisdom and works to liberate us from the military-industrial complex, the archonic systems, and false power structures. These forces connect many dots that are coming into our awareness now more than ever as our solar system aligns with the galactic plane. While residing and traveling independently in over 20 cities in the U.S. and abroad, she developed an excellent knowledge based in frontier health, exopolitics, alchemy, metaphysics, and ancient history, and also has degrees and certifications in science, wilderness expedition leadership, natural healing, and building. She has masterfully woven together the esoteric and alchemical aspects of nature with our ancient roots, hidden history, the present world, and our future potential. And her website is CosmicGaia2012.com. And please welcome Laura to the show this evening. Laura, how are you doing? Laura, you muted? <laughs> That's We're... funny. I was muted. Yes, I'm here. Hello. Nice to be here. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you on. Welcome. Yeah, it's good Thank to you hear for having voice. me. Oh, yeah. my pleasure. Yeah. And I, I'd like to get started. I have so many different questions for you. But first of all, I did tell you this a bit off air, but I just wanted to thank you for the work you're doing and for the beautiful light that you're radiating onto this planet. I know you've been I mean, doing some fabulous work and um, you've been carrying the torch. So I just wanted to, to thank you for doing that. It's very oh, important. Thank you so much. Yeah, it really means a lot. And, um, you know, what the type of work you're doing is very unique indeed. And I'd like for you to kind of define for our listeners what a global alchemist really is. Wow. Okay. Well, it, it really takes going into, I guess one could say, the path of the labyrinth, the dark night of the soul, just sort of, you know, going into the void and allowing oneself to just understand the nature of the soul, the soul being made of, you know, earth, air, fire, water, just like nature. Mm -hmm. Um, nature, the four elements is very alchemical. When we look at the pentagram and we see, you know, the top point, that's the fifth element, which is spirit. So on a soul level and on a world soul level with nature, our own personal process of going inward and going through a massive transformation and how that can affect the larger picture is global alchemy. And so when it's not just about the soul and when the intention or the life path is much larger than that, and it includes things that are beyond, you know, just one's own personal stuff that, you know, goes into patriarchy and what we've been dealing with for the last, you know, many, many thousands of years, really. And uh, some of the lead that we hold as a humanity, Mm -hmm. um, some of that and and all of that journey uh, can represent this alchemy on a macro level and so that's what I did it was it was personal but then it became global and I started to realize that the portals that I were and that excuse me that I was entering wasn't just about me anymore and so I started to really understand the nature of alchemy and I studied galactic history and a lot of my experiences coincided with this journey um and so we can do it on a soul level uh personally but we can also go beyond that and start to bring in some of these issues and causes that are, you know, more important than just our own stuff. Right. If you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. That, that's so critical on this timeline for people to really dive into that. In my opinion, it's, it's really important that they pay attention to those energies. And what is happening with the Galactic Center right now at present? And how is it affecting the timelines here on this Earth? Well, this is considered a stellar activation cycle. That's between, I mean, the window periods vary depending on, you know, who you talk to. But basically, one could say it's 2012 to 2017. Some have a much larger window, but what it really represents is the natural stargates opening and also the planetary body's alignment with the galactic plane. So when we think about a lot of the catastrophes that happened in our ancient history and how the planet was thrown off its axis um, and, and how much the vibration sank, um, in density when we were like in four, five, six dimensional energies in Lumaria 
in Atlantis, and now we're in this 3D reality, we've completed a cycle that has now put us back into alignment, which means we are getting major transmissions from the galactic core. We're also getting it from the center of the Earth, the core sun, which is a star. And it's also a part of who we are because we've been, you know, riding this wheel for so many thousands of years, um, you know, learning through trial and error, you know, based on wearing different hats and having different experiences, how to really, you know, kind of figure out at this point who we are. But of course, there's been agendas alongside all of this. Um, one could call them artificial timelines connected to things like chemtrail agendas and you know, basically it's a negative alien agenda, one could call it. But if you take away, you know, the extraterrestrial component, which is difficult for some, it's basically what the global elite is attempting to do. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're working with lower entities. And so we're in a period right now where we can really expand into higher Earth energies. And of course, religion distorts this thing as the rapture, it's this and that, it's, you know, Christ coming. But really, it's us recognizing our multidimensional nature and starting to wake up what we're really made of because we're co-creating this and it's, it's a shift that comes from within as well as how we interact and respond to what's external. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Yeah. And when you look at all the density on this world now, to me, it seems like through all this um, higher consciousness, we are dropping density and actually it's bringing up the the drama bubbles in my opinion. Would you, would you agree on that or what's your take? Oh yeah. That, that right now we're the, the drama bubbles just sort of like everything kind of purging and coming up to the surface. Mm-hmm. You mean? Yeah. And even with the governments and, and all the control mechanisms that are, that are desperately trying to cling to the spirit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, there's a lot more transparency. It's very difficult to hide anything. Mm-hmm. It's, I, I almost look at it like the tide going out and, you know, the rocks are exposed and it's like, you can't really, you know, nature's, you know, creating this. And one can even see in the news every time they do a false flag thing or any time they try and attempt some sort of deception. I mean, people are on it and they are analyzing it and they're putting out the facts and saying, hey, this isn't lining up. It took a while with 9-11 with the architects and engineers. But now, you know, we see things in the news that people are just saying that's impossible. That's not you know, what EMTs normally do when there's this kind of accident. So, you know, there's glitches all over the board. And, um, you know, it's very difficult with the higher vibration coming in and just what we're emanating for them to be able to hold form and, and deceive. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, and so people are also purging their, their, their deny, you know, their, their inability to really cope with this. There's a lot of resistance. And so the amount of resistance that there is is also producing sort of a by- byproduct of energy that, um, you know, can create some some level of madness. Mm-hmm. And these other distractions that are a little bit easier to glom onto that aren't so much about deception, but more about, you know, keeping us down in our addictions and our, and our lower reactive natures and our, you know, fear or guilt or resentments and just the things that, like, we feel are human, which are actually more programming. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of that is starting to want to, you know, fall away, but then we're bombarded with all these frequency manipulations coming from all this other stuff because they know that this is the window period for this and they don't want what's naturally occurring because of course we're shedding all this stuff. Of course we're in the position where we can do it. And that's why all this GMO stuff, fluoride in the water and why these agendas are really, you know, getting more obvious and more extreme, which is good on the one hand, but on the other hand, um, you know, if people don't start to act, I'm not gonna. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's, it'll be too late because I don't have a do uh, like a do mentality at all, no matter what happens. But mm-hmm. it'll certainly delay things for longer than they need to be if we don't respond now during this window period. I totally agree with you, and it's been interesting because I have such a resonance with your information. But insofar as what's happening right now, I agree with you. We need to make some changes and we need to take some action now. What about um, altering the array system through through remote influence? Um, have you? Is that an idea? Is that something we could work on on a higher level of consciousness as a group? Or what's your take on that? Well, I believe, you know, this is a frequency war we're dealing with. Um, but, of course, we're not sinking to the level of being in battle mode. It's really mm-hmm. about, you know, raising the frequency and also understanding that, you know, there, there's so much terminology and there's so much deception out there that, um, I mean, it, it's probably not quite the word deception, but there's a lot of things that can lead us astray. The way we define certain things like the word ascension and enlightenment and what it means to be spiritual. We have to, you know, really recognize that we're all spiritual. Mm-hmm. And the, the thing that has really been keeping humanity dumbed down is the unconsciousness, the inability to accept our multidimensional nature and the control of, you know, obviously religion, but also the tendency to fall into atheism or the other side of the coin. Everything is always extremes. It's either this or it's that. And and we got to find kind of that middle line where we understand, you know, we're all spiritual beings. Forget, you know, 
it, it's not so important um, what the words are or what is outside of us. It, it's it's just important that we expand and that we understand that spirituality really is our creative our creative imagination and our ability to tap into it and utilize our belief systems and our invocations and our intentions, you know, to serve us. And mm-hmm. Uranus, for example, is the planet behind this shift in a major way. It rules also Aquarius, and we know that this is like the Aquarian age. And it's the planet of extremes, but it's also the planet of universal truth. So why then the duality? Well, if we swing from one extreme to the other, eventually we get exhausted and we want to find that middle point of balance. And so it teaches us extremes until we sort of realize that it's all a part of the same whole. And the more we can get into the center of it, the more we find that zero point energy. And it's actually what liberates us from the Zodiac, which is the wheel of necessity, which is the map um, to fully understanding ourselves and what is kind of keeping us from being able to kind of expand into all these, you know, many aspects of all that we are, because that's what it's really about. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's not rejecting any aspect of who we are, but integrating all of it and recognizing the wholeness instead of condemnation or this is good, this is bad, but just saying, hey, let's just be real. Let's just be whole. Let's just be genuine. And when we can do that, the things that aren't of a high vibration tend to fall away because we feel empowered. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. It's almost like being the sacred witness to some extent when you think about it. It's very, very interesting. And also, I think the, the unconditional love and just just generating that, that wave of energy really does make a, a change, too, on a higher level, even on a subtle level. Absolutely. I mean, kids, children can't thrive without love. I mean, love is the most powerful thing. And nature, you know, is regenerative. It's That's, that's what it is without and any of us having anything to do with it. I mean, our immune systems, too. The minute we injure ourselves, you know, something is completely and totally on it. And it's nature. It knows how to regenerate. It knows how to maintain itself. But it's the mind control and it's all these manipulations that keep us sort of out of alignment. You know, mm-hmm. we give our power away. We want somebody to fix it for us. We we listen to what somebody says, like, this is what you have. This is what it's going to do. And it's so unempowering. And it's the mind control that has separated us from knowing how to consciously work with our own bodies and the planet Mm -hmm. and how to kind of like direct the energy based on, you know, the understanding and awareness of it. We're kind of in ignorance to it, which puts a major block in the way. And it's almost like people are out of control. It's like whatever happens to their body is almost separate from, you know, their emotions, their, their mental bodies. And, and it's just sort of something to take in and, and take a pill for. And I mean, and the same thing with nature and just whatever imbalances we see, if we drug nature, then we end up having to treat the side effects, and then we treat those side effects, and then all of a sudden, the planet's on an artificial life support system, which one could say is transhumanism and artificial intelligence, mm-hmm. and, it's, and, it's, and it's specifically an agenda so that it'll lead to that. So we have to say, wait a second, why are we allowing this? Stop with the blame. Let's start to look at ourselves. Where are we enabling it? Because we're the free energy technology they're feeding off of, mm-hmm. so when we step into that wave of love like you're talking about that's everything because it starts to say hey we're influencing this reality we're not the, at the mercy of it and we're not going to just listen to these outer authority structures anymore that's the biggest deal right now is to be in that empowerment because that wave of energy will crush things like harp and will dismantle these mind control systems because it's based on frequency and mm-hmm. and that's way lower than what we're made of oh absolutely i totally agree with you I, c- I couldn't resonate more with your information and also with consciousness and we all know they're trying to control and manipulate consciousness because consciousness manifests every reality i mean you can do anything with consciousness in motion so that would explain a lot of their tactics um and so far as the dna activation goes and, and everyone's dna is open and activated obviously to some degree i would imagine now what's your impression of that well um we used to definitely, of course, be 12-strand DNA and beyond. And um, after Atlantis and Lemuria sank, um, the, 12 seed, the 12 tribes were seeded. And the, and the whole goal or, or intention behind that was that we would, you know, the root races would pass codes to each other and we'd be able to uh, rehabilitate our DNA over a long period of time mm-hmm. um, in the hopes that we would be able to, uh, you know, really develop ourselves and not move too quickly and, 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 and have some of those things that happened that led to catastrophe and destruction. And, of course, we got taken advantage of in the process of not fully being completely and totally activated. In actual fact, the junk DNA and um, 
some of the seals that were put in our DNA were, were done by benevolent forces, but then frequency fences were put in by negative forces that didn't want us to, you know, be activated and get the codes from others and be on this ascension path. So we're in just this major battle between all this stuff. We're totally caught in the middle. Mm -hmm. And so DNA is, you know, it's, people tend to think it's genetics, what you were born with, what your bloodline is, and it's not. It's, it's really consciousness trumps all of that. And when you expand yourself, when you expand your heart, when you really step into a higher field of consciousness and you allow yourself to dig into uncomfortable territory and go into the dark night of the soul and places that they've taught us to fear, um, we actually activate our DNA because we're accessing more of who we are. And we don't need to look outside of ourselves for that. It's really something that we can activate simply by knowing ourselves and putting ourselves through enough challenges to sort of exercise those muscles that have been dormant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes perfect sense to me also. And also with the cellular memory, there's so much there encoded. I mean, when I look at the Universal Archives and what we've been through insofar as our, our star family, it's it's infinite in my opinion. So yeah, you make perfect sense. Oh my goodness, I just love talking to you. I'm so excited to have you here tonight. I love these questions. I'm like, oh, I'm just getting into the stuff I love to talk <laughs> oh, about. Oh good, I'm glad. Yeah, and also you know wherever you feel guided to talk, just go with it. Because, um, oh, I'd love to see your questions. So oh, I'm excellent. Well, good because I have a ton of questions for you tonight. So this is awesome. But uh -huh. I, I I do have another one. It's, uh, what have you noticed through your travels and so far as what needs to be addressed and shifted in order for this world to move through the density which has been impacting the masses? Well, I have to say, I mean, I really do think that the geoengineering has to be addressed. I mm -hmm. think we're going to be okay if it doesn't fully um, maybe reach that goal that many of us hope, you know, that it'll, you know, totally be shut down. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like to rely on lofty goals, you know, to determine whether or not we're going to be okay. But while we're here, knowing that this is what we're up against, I think it's crucial because this is a global thing. It's not like, oh, it's just, you know, the United States or it's just, you know, this group of people. And even if that were the case, it, it, everybody should still respond like a global family and look out for each other. Um, of course, taking care of their own interests and being, you know, careful with themselves. But this is a global issue here. This is our food. This is our water. This is our oceans. This is our sky. This is our soil. This is everything. There's nothing that we can possibly do in life that really matters if we don't have those things healthy and intact. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what's taking us down. And that's basically what they're attacking they're 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 attacking mother earth and and mm -hmm. you know of course that's why the divine feminine energy is get, getting so much attention because people realize wait a second this is very patriarchal the control of nature the control of weather mm -hmm. you know well look at our history it's been the control of the feminine it's been the exile of her and all her you know gifts and abilities on the deepest of levels and all these program versions of the masculine and feminine you know so i think it has to be addressed on an energetic level to really start to wake up what we're really made of but then to really address um, this kind of stuff and to kick these, you know, this small group of people out that have this power that shouldn't. I mean, mm -hmm. our numbers are so much greater. And I'm and I'm, yeah. I, I, I have to say I'm going a little crazy because, you know, we have the power to do this. And there's all sorts of ways that we can do this. And I just posted something. Um, Skyder alert. Uh, it's something you can have as an app on your phone. And all you need to do is take pictures of chemtrails and it'll go right to the government officials and they'll see you know, that everybody's bombarding them with photographs and are saying, hey, wait a second, none of this was voted for. Um, it's criminal, actually. And, 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 and basically, the, the producer of the film, Look Up, you know, is saying, you know, photographing this stuff is like photographing a crime scene. You know, mm -hmm. we got to hold them accountable. So I would say that that's the number one thing, that it is our food, it is our water, it's what our kids, you know, it's our future, it's everything, it's our earth. But I do know we're on a multidimensional planet. And beyond whatever happens in this particular density, I know we're going to be okay. But while we're here, this is our responsibility. And to also remind people what they're made of and to start dropping all the conquer and divide agendas of what war has done, all the historical resentments, all the BS between the masculine and feminine. And, of course, you know, on that, then we raise the frequency while we're addressing and being proactive about the more practical kind of like food, water, you know, basic mm -hmm. human needs. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And and so far, it sounds to me, or it seems to me, like they are trying to terraform the Earth. Is that your impression also? Well, yeah. Um, I mean, extraterrestrials are involved. And I, I almost don't want to put it in the same category because some, I mean, extraterrestrials to me are like, you know, more benevolent. These just seem alien because it's alien. It's foreign. It's like, what are you thinking? What are you doing? And and, and it seems, okay, Every race is kind of out for themselves. There is a survival issue here. I mean, that's why they ever created treaties with um, the governments. But why would they create treaties and what did they really need? What did they need for their survival? Our genetics. 
Why? Because they do not want to be ascended beings. They do not want to activate their um, their highest DNA potential. You know, um, they do have a high level uh, ability on a DNA level, but they don't want to. They they want to have total dominion of the time matrix, and so their life cycle has to do with what they can take from us. Mm -hmm. They've become parasites. They are not in connection with their own source, their own higher self. And so the agenda basically has to do with using the time loop and this, and the artificial time um, component as a mechanism of having a life cycle, you know, go mm -hmm. because Dan Burrish, who's a whistleblower um, who worked for MJ 12, he was a microbiologist, I think was his title. Mm -hmm. Um, he referred to the greys, some species of the greys, as future human selves from 52,000 years into the future and 42,000 years into the future. And these were the beings that, you know, needed our genetic material in order to um, rehabilitate their race. If they didn't have this control agenda, they'd be able to re rehabilitate themselves just based on the regenerative power of nature and spirit. Mm -hmm. But because they're not taking that route, they're using us. And so they tried to make deals. And like, of course, some people in the government, probably my great grandfather might have, you know, felt or others around him that are actually looking out for our good that, okay, let's help out. Not realizing that these are the same beings that were working with the Nazis that have been, you know, a part of our galactic history for so long and these wars that took place that led to the sinking of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. We're all born with amnesia. We can't really see the larger picture. And that's why he gave us the warning because when he saw that, wow, they broke the treaty and um, none of it was what was, you know, set up in the, uh, in the meeting, um, then it was like, wow, okay, here's a warning. But I also found out that he wasn't the one that was responsible for the treaties. But, you know, there's all these different people saying this and that, and I'm not here to be biased or just, you know, defend anybody either. I'm just here to look at the truth and the facts. And all I know, despite who decided what, that these races of beings want to terraform the planet and, and are using all these technologies to do so, mainly mind control and artificial intelligence so that we are robotic and we are pr basically soulless and we're serving them and they're changing the earth so that they can um, inhabit it because their, their, their bodies are not able to really acclimate. Um, they need actually radiation. They need all this kind of stuff. But, you know, we're dealing with so many races. It's like who's who, but right. yeah. That's true too. And, you know, obviously, I mean, not to get into specifics of my background, but, you know, I've been through a covert assault, assault weapon and it dealt with um, artificial intelligence uh, artificial intelligence integrated into my neural circuitry, which was, of course, synthetic telepathy. So I do confirm your information insofar as, yes, I know what they're trying to do, controlling and manipulating, and I know um, that you can fight it and break free of it, but it's a, it's a nasty little program they've got running. And, and my next question to you is, um, coming from the ancestry of the Eisenhowers and, and Eisenhower, what, what do you feel is the most serious issue we have standing in America today? And what do you feel your great-grandfather was confronted with on that timeline? Now, I don't know how much specific information you can go into, but I'm really wondering what was haunting him, if anything. Yeah, well, I think a lot was. Um, I mean, when he gave the warning about the military-industrial complex, I almost feel like I'm doing the same thing just talking about chemtrails and just mentioning any of these technologies. It's just kind of like, well, here's what it looks like. These are the different things. These are the different areas that relate to this uh, warning that he gave. Um, and to be in that kind of position and to be dealing with a certain level of manipulation before most of the masses even were aware of whistleblowers or shadow government or Illuminati – and you're just kind of like in the thick of it, in the middle of it, you know, trying to defeat Hitler, trying to win the Second World War, then all of a sudden recognizing that we're, we're in a multidimensional battle here and it's not just with humans. And I don't know um, everything that he understood. You know, I know that he uh, definitely dealt with these extraterrestrial beings or these gray aliens in a meeting. I don't have any family proof of it, but enough whistleblowers have made me pretty certain on top of the fact that I was involved in some shadow government stuff that basically revealed it all and proved it to me. Mm -hmm. um, but he also had uh, beings from Venus named Valiant Thor and his ship Victor One visit, and that was after the treaty uh, with the Greys. And basically Eisenhower um, and Nixon put the beings from Venus up in the Pentagon for three years under VIP protection. And basically wanted to help them with their mission to help um, humanity and all the injustices and all the false power structures and to help, you know, the human race. I mean, he was totally on their side. So I know that whatever happened with the Greys 
was not something he was into, but something he might have been manipulated into. Because I don't think the beings from Venus would want to deal with him if he was, like, a part of the reptilian agenda or a part of, like, the major Illuminati machine of what they're really trying to do. I, I just see him kind of standing on the outskirts, you know, dealing with these manipulations, dealing with these advisors that are linked into it, dealing with these 13 families that are just all about government, all about, the you know, the Nazis and the Zionists. And here he is, this farm boy who's just trying to, you know do his best to win this war. And when I see the family, I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's not just the farm boy thing. Maybe this is Illuminati. You know, I've, I've been really, really like on top of looking and paying real close attention. Um, I had a tough time growing up. I don't have, I, I love my family so much, but I don't have any reason to protect anybody. You know, I've always been a free spirit. I've always been just bent on truth and I've just been on my own path. So I don't, I don't have any loyalties here. I haven't made any agreements. So when I look real hard, I can tell, you know, this is, you know, a really normal family. You know, there's no trust fund. We don't, we, we drive beaters, you know, I, I've never really, I, I, I've lived like, you know, nobody would ever know, you know, I've been on welfare, I've been on food stamps, you know, this is not your typical presidential family. People would probably think, oh, you're probably taken care of, you probably have all this money. No. Um, and so I, I just see him as just sort of bouncing on the outskirts, just doing his best and just getting caught up in it. And, and I think what he knows we're up against that I'm trying to, you know, really, have people understand is that, you know, there is an incredibly powerful agenda that's trying to have complete and total domination and control. It has roots in our galactic history, but we are so incredibly powerful and we can absolutely handle it, but we've got to step up and mm -hmm. do something. And so he had eight heart attacks. I know that he was haunted by a lot. I can see the way his pictures changed over time. I can see, you know, I actually, somebody posted his chart on my wall and I've been doing his astro chart and I'm just like, oh. wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's got like a big heart, you know, I, I could just, you know, I just saw that his, his heart was in the right place, but so incredibly challenged. And it's just really about our freedom. And it's like, you know, it, it, it has everything to do with our freedom. And, um, and, and also, of course, my end of it is just really about, you know, the earth. And, and I know he had a part of that, but he was much more a military person. As far as I'm concerned, I focus on, um, you know, the soul and, and how we connect to the earth and nature and, and spirit and, and, and how everything is connected. Mm -hmm. Everything that we're seeing in the governments right now is connected to all that we're made of and all they're trying to shut down. And it's shown in mythology. It's shown in all these places that are somewhat hidden while our history books have been rewritten so that we think this stuff is nuts when we hear it because we, what, paid attention in class. I didn't, so I don't have that problem. <laughs> Neither did I. Yeah, it's censorship big time. Even as children, we were censored with false data. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting because when you see the black mirror between the worlds, you can shatter that mirror and get the truth. And, you know, I applaud him. I mean, I'm sure um, when you're in a position like that, I mean, you're there's so much corruption. And uh, I mean, they go through a lot of challenges, as we all do. But I think the biggest thing we can do, and like you said before, is to stand strong and be very spiritual and uh, and alter these these false realities and matrices. And I love what you're doing. I love the way you speak. And I'm really, really proud of you. You've done fabulous. Oh, thank you so yeah, much. You really are a wonderful soul. I just wanted to tell you that. I'm really happy to have you on tonight, and I should have had you on sooner, but hey, you're here now. That was so. perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's yeah, awesome. and also I was curious about your name, Magdalene. Now, how did, is that, uh, is that your given name, or, or you're connected with Mary Magdalene lineage, or how is that working? Well, my father um, chose that as my middle name. Um, it was spelled in the French way, and I just sort of changed it to Magdalene just because it was calling out a little bit more to me, and it was just a variation, and I knew that, I don't know, it just resonated more so my name my birth name um was laura madeline bradshaw and then my father became well my parents got an annulment and then my mom legally changed my last name to eisenhower because that's her maiden name mm -hmm. and because she ended up raising us it was just sort of pointless he actually became a priest <laughs> oh, wow. so it was like sort of like it, it would have been weird to have that last name because he's not supposed to have kids. He became a Catholic priest, which is a little odd. We don't really have to get into that because I'm sure you know, just like me, religion is not my thing. Mm -hmm. I respect, you know, n nothing to bash anything, but um, not my thing at all. So um, then when my mom legally changed my name, she I was 11. She took out Madeline, and I was just like, what? <laughs> and so I got it back, and I just said, you know what? The, the name that resonates with me, which I which I changed and I've kept for the last maybe since 2006 is Laura Magdalene Eisenhower. It's mm -hmm. the only one that resonates. Otherwise, Mahan, which is a, a stepdad's last name that she legally changed my name to with the middle name Eisenhower because she changed it again. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he passed away and that's not my, I mean, that's, that's my stepdad. So I've had like a lot of weirdness connected to the name. And then finally one day I said, you know what? 
I'm going to take one, you know, a few of the names that resonate most that have been a part of either my legal name or a name change that got switched, and I'm going to call my power back and just claim it. Mm -hmm. And so I took these two because I really, to me, they just sort of show my my mission in a lot of ways. The Magdalene energy about the divine feminine and just reconnecting with that and getting, you know, to the real core of... um, you know, what that means for all of us, because, of course, that's a part of all of who we are. And then the Eisenhower just sort of, like, merging with the Magdalene. I was like, cool, you know, if I had those two in a name, maybe this will activate more of what I'm all about, which is to really integrate the spiritual, the political, um, the physical, the mental, you know, everything. It's, mm-hmm. it's just about wholeness for me. Oh, yeah, it certainly has, without a doubt. I laugh because I've been affiliated with, and I still am, a uh, Magdalene Coven, a Mary Magdalene Coven. <gasps> Oh, yeah. cool. And, and we have a running joke that says the Magdalene's always wear black, but that's just the coven thing. But yeah, it's interesting because it is connected to mystery schools, of course, and um, the ancient teachings and, and uh, the cosmic Christ and a lot of other things. But um, yeah, very, very interesting that that resonance is there. And that name suits you perfectly. So yeah. Oh, well, it's so cool. I'd love to talk to you about, you know, your connection. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, I could talk to you. It's so funny. Hours. I used to wear black all the time. And I, I actually, it's my preferred choice of color. Yeah, I like black. I used to wear a lot of color, and then after my induction, I started going black all the time. But, um, you know, it seems to be a cloaked color for me these days. But I still like bright colors, too. But, yeah. yeah, I go back and forth a bit. Mm-hmm. And I was going to ask you real quick about the – now, this is a little – not necessarily off topic. I just wanted to kind of ask you, what about the, the Wilderness Expedition leadership? What exactly does that include? Well, when I was uh, in high school, I was in the D.C. area, and I was just like, I got to get out of here. This is just not me. And um, and I didn't even apply for college. I, I, I wasn't even going. I had the worst attendance, I think, in my whole high school. And then I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where I'm going to go. And I'm just, I, I was just going to hit the road and just, I don't know, get get a vehicle and just get lost and just go to, and I did quite a few times, go on road trips. But I got this thing in the mail, and um, it was about, you know, wilderness expedition leadership and in and, and the field of, you know, wilderness education. I was like, hey, you know, that would be really good because I think I'm going to learn the real stuff if I'm out in nature because I, I just – nothing in the school was, was, was grabbing me. And I was starting to feel like, God, you know, I – not that I believed I had learning disabilities, but I was starting to kind of like scratch my head and wonder like, okay, I, I got to find something here. So I just, you know, educated myself in astrology, the occult and everything that I possibly could that was of interest to me. And then I got myself out there into the wilderness and I spent about two years um, in the field, in the desert, and then, you know, in the mountains in the winter, you know, just camping and just survival. I mean, it was pretty extreme. Mm-hmm. Um and then, you know, did a lot of my own, you know, traveling. And I just realized, you know, I'm not doing this to take other people on expeditions. I'm doing this just to heal, to get close to Mother Earth, to just watch how energy works, to watch, you know, how the elements work. And everything that I talk about, about global alchemy, really got triggered, you know, when I was out in the wilderness, my understanding of it. And I just, I guess one calls them, oh, I got all these downloads. But I mean, I was getting something. I was getting some sort of like major intuitive insights into what this planet needs and just the 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 masculine and feminine energies coming into balance and how this relates to nature and how this relates to alchemy and um and finally when i left the wilderness i was like oh my god i get it this is what i'm here to do and of course everybody kind of looks at me like i was not in the right area for anybody to you know say hey i resonate maybe it was the location i was living in but it was just brutal i was just like And then I I fell into addiction and I was just like really lost for a while. And then I was like, you know what? You were okay when you're in the wilderness. Get yourself out of this area and just, you know, hit the road and just let spirit guide you and start to bring in people that are of like mind. And, you know, don't, don't let, don't fall apart here. Even though I did and most of my life, I feel like I've fallen apart, but gotten back up again. That's a part of it. You know, we got to be real about it and we can't beat ourselves up about it. Um, when we're pulled into those areas, we learn a lot. The whole point is, though, you got to get back out. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I agree with that. Yeah, I love to calibrate in the mountains or by the ocean. To me, nature is very, very significant. And of course, and I think that's what's so heartbreaking is when you see how they're destroying that and how, you know, we need to change that so we have nature. You know? I know, and it's everybody. And, and you know, some people think that the, the people that are speaking out about geoengineering or chemtrails, and I wrote something about this today, are either, you know, activists or conspiracy theorists, or there's some sort of label, or New Agers or paranoid. And it's like, do you not breathe the air? Do you not eat food? Do you not enjoy hiking? Have you, <laughs> do you enjoy flowers? I mean, do you have children? I mean, this is not for just a few. This is everything. This is like our planet, okay? There's, where else do we have right now? And, 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 and the thing is, you know, you, you might know my story about being recruited to go to Mars. Mm-hmm. A big reason I didn't go to Mars is because I knew the, the BS that was happening here, and I wanted to, you know, have a voice and, and, and 
basically warn people. It didn't matter to protect the physical. You know, people are so bent on protecting the physical. It's like, what about the soul? You know, let's let's be more concerned about not being controlled mm-hmm. and less concerned about staying alive because what is there to live for if, if everything's poisoned and we're like robotic, for God's sake? Is it really worth it? Mm-hmm. You know, people are keeping their heads in the sand for the fear of death or something or the fear of, you know, not being able to enjoy like whatever they've signed up for that they're, you know, connected to, but you know, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to take your life over. Just do, do, do something small, just share a little bit of information or something. Right. Yeah. There's a difference between living and existing. That's the bottom line. And you know, are you going to run for politics anytime soon? <laughs> I'm so not political. I mean, I'd love to, but you know, I couldn't pass the citizenship test. I don't have a mind for government. I don't know how it all works to me. It's like, so freaking foreign Mm -hmm. but that's another reason why I want to get in there because you know sometimes I'm like well I was born into this family for a reason I certainly wasn't groomed to be a politician and I don't have those instincts as far as how to manage myself in the way that they go about it but I do connect with cosmic law divine Mm -hmm. justice I'm all about you know equal I mean I'm I'm all I have all the the principles and I have the integrity and I have the vision so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm interested in that, but I'd love to just sort of create something from scratch mm-hmm. just with the people, just unify all of us and, and just say, hey, let's start our own stuff. Because I can't imagine going in there and, and, and going into the White House. You know, it's just like right. so crawling and infested with just really low energy. But if, if I really um, see that that's opening up and I need to do that, I certainly will. Yeah, it's interesting because I agree with you on that. It's almost like the whole system needs to be taken down and reconstructed. And and you know what comes to mind as light councils and galactic ambassadors. Um, yes. And maybe that's part of the plan in the future we see. Who knows? But that's what comes in for me insofar as what I'd like to see. And, yes. Um, representatives of, of other, other star systems, other species. Anyway, we have a lot of different species here, and I know you are aware of that. And even though we all exist in this little matrix of a body, I mean, we're different. We're all We're all from different planets and universes as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, yeah. it's a big mix. <laughs> yeah, we have to open ourselves up to that sort of dialogue because all the technologies and all these, you know, races have been hidden from us, except for if you're a contactee or an abductee. So when you look at that, actually millions and billions of people are aware of this and our governments are too. So it's like, where is this, you know, this lie? Where where does it really hold any weight? Just the ones that haven't had contact or the ones that aren't in government that are just like, what are these people talking about? Mm-hmm. And it's pretty small numbers. And so, yeah, I, I'm going to be speaking in Italy at the Citizens Hearing Disclosure if all goes well. It looks like it's all lined up. And um, I'm just going to really open my mouth loud about um, some of this stuff. And if, you know, we can gut the government and kick out all the ones that are running it in the wrong way and use that foundation that's already been set great. But I do feel, you know, we need to do it from the bottom up or to create it ourselves. And, you know, just like you and just others, we know, we know a lot of galactic ambassadors. We know a lot of star seeds. We know a lot of people that, um, you know, would be perfect for this, that, Mm -hmm. that don't lie, that understand the laws of integrity, that understand that, um, our free will and, uh, you know, our rights, um, you know, need to be addressed because, we're getting further and further away from that goal on a government um, level mm-hmm. right oh, now. Totally. Yeah, they can't handle power is what I see. I mean, it's just it's about handling power and also staying connected to source through the process. And, you know, those of us who have met through the what you call the dark night of the soul. I mean, I've been through that, too. And we understand when we come out that we're still fortified in spirit. And I think that's huge. I mean, it's just really big. It is. It is. And that was the, the I mean, it was the greatest journey ever. But it was, of course, it was grueling and just difficult and painful. Um but at the same time, you know, it, it was it, it was like this is it. This is this is where it's at. This is so wonderful. And whatever about the isolation, or I mean, you feel like you're living a double life because there's no real opportunity to get away with it when you're you know you have to take care of you know survival needs. But it's just amazing the immaturity of these you know people because the beings they attract are based on the vibration that they hold. You know, mm-hmm. but they're also multi generational. You know, abuses happening and ritual abuse happening. And most of these people, you know, they're just possessed and it's not even them. And we have to understand that. And, um, you know, really help them too. I mean, this is like a huge crisis on that level. Um, but then there's some that are just completely egoic, completely immature and don't even care and just turn a blind eye because they want money and they're being given or bribed, you know, for, um, just service to themselves and greed. Mm -hmm. And it's just unbelievable. Yeah, I totally agree. And insofar as my labs go, um, what's your impression of my labs? I know that there are a lot of people getting pulled into those and being programmed and misdirected. So, so what's your take on the my labs? Well, I think that's what we're dealing with more than anything else with abductions now. Um, I mean, we have a lot of, you know, or we've heard a lot of people say just at events and radio show stuff, 
you know, that the, the, the dark entities are gone or you, there's no more abductions from ET races. And, you know, I don't, I don't know if I completely agree, but I definitely know that the my lab thing, the military involvement um, is huge. And <laughs> when I was recruited to go to Mars, the person that was trying to bring me into the program, that was what he was dealing with. And he thought that they were legitimate um, encounters. And, um, and I was sensing, you know, I think you went through something similar. And I know that attempts have been on me where there's, you know, this attempt of artificial telepathy or some sort mm -hmm. of, you know, they do chipping and they do all sorts of things to link you into something else right. to cause you to believe that something else is actually happening. And um, so my thoughts on that is that it's just a way to get to the individual to begin to manipulate their energy field to possibly chip them, to tag them or whatever, <clears throat> and then monitor them. And then usually, you know, it's because they're having encounters with benevolent races and this is a way to sabotage that experience for them. Yeah, true. I totally agree with you on that. And there are, there's so many people, you know, psychotronic weapons deployment is huge here in the United States. And of course you'll, you'll hear and see things, you know, with these mass shootings and this and that. And I know that's all triggered. So there's a lot happening with mind control weapons and, and yeah, the artificial intelligence is big too. And, um, but I do know that the soul can overpower that. Um, so Definitely. I think that we need to make sure where we stay steady and, and higher consciousness, but yeah, I was curious about that for sure. So they have tried to pull you in a little bit, huh? Yeah. Oh, just based on what you just said before, I, I always like to say you can't GMO or like genetically modify a soul or the spirit. So whatever <laughs> with the physical, you know, we got to kind of be somewhat detached. Yeah. When I was recruited to go to Mars in 2006, I mean, I had been targeted my whole life. I know all about psychotronic weaponry. The group that was involved in, um, you know, trying to recruit me in, if you Google them, they're called the aviary, A-V-I-A-R-Y, like uh, bird aviary. Mm -hmm. um, and they all have bird names. And it was funny because during the time, and they're calling each other falcon and penguin. And I used to joke like, you know, it's like being in a Batman movie, you know, like what is going on? <laughs> There's here? no blue raven there, is there? <laughs> Maybe, actually. I think. <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, so I, I was paying real close attention to all the people that were involved in this recruitment because I was only getting a portion of it from my partner, you know, who was basically, you know, telling me everything I needed to know, but I didn't have access to the group that he was dealing with. So I wrote down all the names and I investigated all the names and basically they were just kind of cover stories, cover occupations. But, you know, this group was all about um, UFO phenomena and they had something called the weird desk where they'd taken unusual UFO cases. And I was like, you know what? I think they started this and they're a part of the my labs and they're actually behind this. And then they pull you in once they have kind of gotten you, um, or they created, you know, an abduction scenario and then they find you and they call you in like they're there to help you, but in actual fact, they're not. Right. And then anyway, the whole point is after about two weeks of research, everything basically had been destroyed about a lot of what their past was about. Um, not very accessible. I finally found something on them and it connected them with psychotronic weaponry and harp and all this, you know, different stuff. I was like, yes, I knew that these people were involved in this. And I knew that this wasn't like a John Mack thing or, you know, a ufologist group that's really trying to help. These were like shadow government, you know, individuals that were tasked to, you know, create these scenarios to bring in these individuals to serve a certain agenda. And when they tried to pull me in, I started to notice this. They were going to give me a handler. I was getting attacked left and right. It took me, uh, I would say 20 years. I was feeling suffocated almost every day. Energetically, it was hell. That was part of the dark night of the soul was to overcome these frequency manipulations and the psychotronic weaponry. So yes, I know you can overcome it. But when I was there, it was like, okay, now we want you in there. And then when I started to do the research, I was like, okay, and I had prophetic dreams about what they were up to. I was like, okay, game over. This is it. I started talking about it. I could tell that the phones were bugged and, like, all this stuff. But once they knew that I was on to them and I knew what they were all about, they started to leave me alone and they actually tried to befriend me and they were just, like, actually really kind of freaked out. I think I completely caught them off guard, which is a hard thing to do because they can monitor most things. Mm -hmm. But the thing with the reptilian mindset or just any of this stuff is – they plan so accordingly that they, they don't know how to handle the spontaneous. Um, mm -hmm. But what was I going to say? So two years later, after uh, I got away from the recruitment, which basically would have taken me off planet, and I would be there now if I did go, because the target date was 2012 to occupy a Mars colony, I got out, and then two years later, somebody put out a website about them that shares all this information about um, artificial telepathy, my labs, um, gang stalking, um, you know, you name it, but it's, it's under the aviary. And I, I almost don't want to say, you know, any names just because they talk about me on the radio, but 
if you Google John Alexander and the aviary, you'll find it. I mean, it's a website. They can't get mad at me now. It's, it's out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I appreciate you saying that. And yeah, I mean, I'm well aware that they're, they're sneaky as all hell. There's no doubt about it, but you're right. We're, we're too powerful for that. And I'm glad you didn't go to Mars. I'm sure you'll be able to go at another point in the continuum, but yeah, under better circumstances, just, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> pretty much on my own terms and, right. you know, Wester, like I know that, you know, UFOs are a part of the consciousness of the pilot, so I'm going to wait till I manifest my own and, you know, go there with people I feel good about. Right. Well, let me know. I'll go with you. I'll bring yes, my dog. Though. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's why I didn't go. I'm like, I want to, you know, I got people to hang with because we're all going to go together and definitely you. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I totally resonate with you. It's like completely. Uh, it's really interesting. I could talk to you for hours and hours. So, yeah. And so just just real quick, um, let's let's um, if, if people want to get in touch with you, how would they do that? First of all. Well, um, you said my website, but it's actually a different name now, but you can get okay. to it with the name that you gave. It's CosmicGaiaSophia.com. Okay. And um, Facebook, Laura Magdalene Eisenhower. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's the easiest. My partner and I have um, HealthyFamilyNow.com, TorahOfLove.com, and we've combined so much of our work and mission. So um, his name is Dr. Dream. His mm-hmm. uh, Facebook name is Mark Dr. Dream Peebler. And, uh, yeah, all our stuff, a lot of it's merged, but the website CosmicGaiaSophia.com is my own. That's awesome. I just love it. Yeah, that's great. And what did, when is your oh, – blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm talking too fast. All right, when is your new lecture coming out, or where are you going to be the next couple of weeks? Okay, um, let me just see here. Uh, I think the next thing – well, I think it's going to be the – citizens hearing disclosure in Italy. Um, but that okay. hasn't been fully, fully confirmed yet. Um, but there is something, you know, February 14th to 16th in Ojai, California, it's called love thyself retreat. And it's basically, um, it's, it's, uh, breath work, sound healing, um, vegan demos, uh, raw food stuff. And, um, you know, my partner and I are just going to go there and talk. And then the 13th annual New Living Expo, April 25th to 27th in San Mateo, California, um, I'll be speaking at. And then, yeah, the rest I'll be posting on my website as things get confirmed. Excellent. That's awesome. That sounds like fun, the vegan retreat. That sounds great. Yeah, that should be great. I I look forward to that. You know, just time to really get into the self-love. That's always, I wouldn't say a tough one for me. It's not that I'm, like, not, like, an appreciation of myself, but... You know, when we're in this sort of world and my nervous system sometimes feels really shot, you mm-hmm. know, it's hard to just give to the self and just take the time to nurture the self. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just finding that that's, that's the best thing I can align myself with is, oh, don't forget to love yourself and take good care of yourself. I'm like, yes, okay, mm-hmm. I will. I totally agree with that, especially nowadays where you have so much dirty electricity and all this bombardment with all sorts of things, you know, for everybody. I mean, it's, it's critical that everybody kind of resets their internal compass, if you ask me. Right, because it's the frequency, and that's what they're trying to, you know, slow down and dumb down and mm-hmm. and lower. So if we don't, then no matter how much we're putting out there, our instrument of the human body is not doing its its optimal job. And and I and I always have to remind myself of that. You know, don't deplete yourself doing the work that you're doing. You have to take care of yourself. You have to make sure that, you know, mm-hmm. you're emitting like a high vibration. And you know, and and it's great to give, 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 and um. And I'm not saying like, oh, I'm just giving, 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 but you know, like just being a mother, I mean, just anything, just mm-hmm. all the demands of life. It just got to replenish. Oh yeah. You have to regenerate without a doubt. Yeah. I totally, I totally agree with that. And the, the sad thing about the psychotronics or any type of that artificial intelligence is that it, it pulls on the life force. It pulls on your chi. And that's one yeah. thing I noticed when I was um, pulled into that program. So yeah, people want to break orbit with that for sure. And you do offer healing sessions, right? Yes, I do. Um, and I'd love to, t- I mean, I, I, gosh, now I'm like, oh, God, I could interview you right now. I'm like, no. Ask <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I noticed it in my lower back a lot and oh. just a lot of like things, you know, trying to, you know, take that. I do do session work. Um, basically, uh, I'm an astrologist and I, I read, um, you know, the energy field. Uh, I work with Tarot and, um, on my website under the readings link, you can see, you know, how much of it I get into. I do composite charts, synastry charts for couples, um, progress charts and transits and, you know, going into the past, past lives, um, and just really helping people to let go of foreign energy, um, help them to understand, you know, their soul purpose and to just, you know, align themselves with what their big priority is on a soul level and um, how they can, you know, get the rest of their life in alignment with it. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah. And, and do you feel that your high profile lineage has protected you to some degree or do you think it's put you more in jeopardy? 
both. You do? Okay. <laughs> awesome question. Yes. Um, before I started to speak about all this, I, I felt so in danger. It was not even funny. I mean, I was a mess. I mean, it was just like every day so hard to survive and, and, and it was invisible weapons. So like nobody could understand it. And I, it wasn't until I went to a clairvoyant institute, which I stumbled upon. I, I didn't have any intention of going. They basically pointed this stuff out and I had a lot of confirmation that this is what was happening. And, um, you know, and Laura, I was like, we're heading yeah. for a break real quick. We'll be right back. Raven Star Switching Hour. My special guest, Laura Magdalene Eisenhower. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody, to Raven Star's Witching Hour. I'm your host, Solaris Blue Raven, and I'm here with my special guest, Laura Magdalene Eisenhower. And what a pleasure it is to have you on, Laura. So it's a blessing. Oh, it's so great to be on. I'm really enjoying being here. Yeah, me too. It's great. And you were discussing a little bit about the your high-profile lineage versus um, protection versus non-protection, so I'll let you elaborate a little bit more on that. Well, I avoided um, using this name, and uh, I didn't really share it with a lot of my friends. And that probably didn't serve me sometimes because I – felt just being a part of this family that it was such a huge catalyst for me and it opened up my field, you know, so greatly when I was a kid. I mean, I feel like a processing machine, you know, since the age of six, just like, okay, what am I here to do? Why am I here? Why the Eisenhower family? And it just, you know, I, it it just had that kind of effect on me much more than, oh, you know, these are the perks of being in a presidential family. It was more like, okay, this is the energy I'm dealing with because of it. And, you know, things connected to, you know, all these rumors with extraterrestrials and, you know, just feeling on an energetic level because I was very empathic and much more about, you know, feeling things rather than thinking things. And, mm-hmm. of course, the mind then follows, like, okay, what am I feeling? What is this? What is this? Because obviously my mind's extremely active. But there was all sorts of things, like, that were expected of me. And um, I didn't pay much attention to it. Um, you know, maybe just what any mom and dad want to see their kid do, even though my parents weren't together. Other, you know, it was basically, you know, one shred of it, just, you know, not to fall off the deep end like I did and, and kind of like, you know, birth myself out of the matrix and back, you know, out the other side of the labyrinth and back, you know, into the physical plane again. That they didn't understand. Nobody could understand. And because I was on that kind of path, it made me very vulnerable because it meant that I wasn't going to go down the timeline that was expected of me. And like I said, one aspect of that was just like any parent wants, you know, your kid to be okay and to be successful. But th- there was a certain expectation that came along with being an Eisenhower that was a huge part of it, not just from family, but from the people that wanted me to go to Mars and from all these other things that I was starting to notice. Because the more free I was trying to become, mm-hmm. the more attack and the more sort of threat there was, you know, and, 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 and just everything. It was like... You know, one one can look at it like if there's frequency fences in our DNA and they don't want us to ascend, imagine, you know, and, and I know you understand this, when you're on a spiritual path, when you hit that those walls and you're willing to go through them, you're not just sitting there in meditation in a lotus position having a fluffy spiritual time at all, <laughs> you know? It's, yep. it's way different. It's going into, like, really hellish territory and, and going into a place that – you know, basically to me, it was like these stargates were clogged up with inorganic entities, very demonic energies. And when you start to move through that and you're actually moving through your own process of opening up your field and expanding your consciousness, there's all sorts of gatekeepers and there's all sorts of forces and beings and entities and humans that represent those beings and entities that do not want you to free yourself or to get out of you know, this, the, the, the prison that, and I don't like to say that because then prison planet, people think I'm talking about Alex Jones stuff, but I mean, you know, just w- what we've been born into and what I like to say is it's like a zoo animal being born into captivity. Mm-hmm. It's not our natural habitat, but it's all we know. And it's only our deeper inner feelings and senses and intuition that help guide us out of it and back to where we belong. So I kept following that voice. And the more I followed it, the more, you know, I just felt like, I mean, literally 20 years was really, really hard to survive. And, and then, you know, that came from just energetically being an Eisenhower, but I realized, okay, well, you know, maybe I need this to use this name so that, you know, people understand what I'm about, what I'm here to represent, what I'm here to speak about. Maybe I'll be taken more seriously because I certainly wasn't being taken seriously as Laura Mahan, mm-hmm. and that was my stepdad's last name. So when I started, you know, to allow people to understand, you know, the Eisenhower connection, and, you know, I almost resent having the name because everybody should be taken seriously, and this shouldn't be like something that helps me, but it's so 
so be it. it. It has helped, but I use it to help others. That's that's where it really, really um, fires me up with my passion because, okay, great. It's helped me so much, but, like, what's the real gift here? Oh, my gosh. You know, I can be a voice for this stuff. Mm-hmm. I can talk about abduction. I can talk about HARP. I can talk about chemtrails. I can talk about all these treaties and psychotronic web, you know, everything that's on the list. And maybe, you know, that'll help. Mm-hmm. And so um, on that level, it's helped me a little bit. And when I got away from the, the Mars recruiters and I got out the other side of this whole death rebirth journey of the labyrinth or whatever you want to call it um you know the more public i got the safer i got energetically but the death threats then came and like you know the more physical threats but i didn't feel it energetically i could just laugh that off compared to what i was feeling you know um based my nervous system and just the the invisible stuff that i was being attacked with Mm -hmm. that ended up clearing but then it ended up being physical more verbal sort of threats but so I guess if that answers the question, it's it, it energetically I've never felt protected or safe. When I started to use the name, it helped me to be taken more seriously in my field and to really reach out to people and have them understand my journey and what, you know, being a part of the Eisenhower family has done to me, which is different than the other members that might ride on the coattails of the name. And I'm not pointing out anybody, I don't want to offend anybody in my family. But they kind of like went down the more expected path, you know. And, um, you know, I blew off everything and every opportunity I could have gotten from being in that family. And I just really focused in on global transformation and exposing truth and being a whistleblower, doing whatever it takes for the human race. So, yes, I mean, I think, you know, it does help doing what I do now today. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, it's kind of like, is it easier? Was your two year old easier or were were they easier when they were teenagers? It's like it's still (laughs) challenging. It's just different sort of challenge. And some things have gotten easier, but some things have gotten more challenging. And one could flip it, you know, before and after I use the name. So, yeah, I I think your great grandfather would be very proud of you, quite honestly. And I think that, like I've said before, you're carrying the torch and maybe you're you're relaying data that he was never able to do. And I think that's another thing. You're kind of fulfilling something on an energetic, maybe even on on a heritage level where you're able to express some things that maybe he wasn't able to do. So I think that, you know, that's what it sounds like to me anyway, energetically. I mean, if if I have, I know my ancestors because I have this, I have a lot of ancestry that's royal bloodline ancestry. And I know that when I come forward and I express truth that they're always watching my back. I mean, I know it sounds strange, but, you know, they don't, they don't really go away. They're just there, you know, in other universes and star systems, as we all know. So. You know, yes, they support us and um, they've moved on to higher levels of consciousness, too. And I'm sure they can see the blueprint of what's happening on this world. Definitely. Um, yeah, I so feel their support. And I, I actually when I was a little kid, I, I just felt his presence visit me all the time. I'm like, why? You know, what is this? And, you know, I and, and I and I knew that we had some sort of alliance and just something in common. And, yeah, we kind of handle it in two different ways. But there was so much he couldn't say. And I knew that he knew that I was the one in the family that was going to do it. Because, I mean, just looking at all my family members now, nobody speaks about UFOs. Nobody talks about ETs. I cannot have any of these conversations with anybody. And they're just like, what the heck is all this? And it's like a huge elephant in the room. I'm like, do you not see what the whistleblowers are saying? And it's not that I talk to each and every family member, but just the few times I've you know, I had a chance to talk to some, and I won't name any names. I mean, they're all really, you know, no, nothing negative to say about them at all. But there have been psychics, you know, that have said along the way, you know, Eisenhower's with you. And they didn't even know I was related to him. They go, that's odd. What, do, you, do you like I- Ike or something? And I'm like, well, I happen to be related to him. They go, oh, okay, that's why. They're like, he walks right by your side. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised at all because the work, it's almost like you have a mission on this planet, if you ask me. It's a very powerful, I've always, yeah, associated with, with some kind of mission. And when I did my website, you know, I think I actually had a mission page. This is the mission. And yeah, even, ever since I was a little kid, I knew I had a mission. So in the worst of worst experiences or times, all I had to do was remind myself of that. I would just say to myself, it's just another day at the office. Don't take it too personally. Just keep on going. Because if you start to take it too personally, you're going to fall apart. And like I said, of course, I fall apart a bunch of times. But, you know, knowing that this was part of a larger mission, um, always helped me get back on my feet and, and remember, you know, to just stay strong and that we, we've totally got this. I mean, we really do. I mean, it can look so terrible at times, but think about somebody in the hospital who the doctors say, you'll never be able to walk again. That person can still walk. Many have, Mm -hmm. maybe some can't, but you know, I don't believe in the word can't. So that's their belief that, that makes it that more solid. So the density of this human experience is majorly densified by the lower belief systems we have that, Um, you know, block our real potential. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. They use words to define reality when in fact, a lot of those words don't define anything. Yeah, they don't. And there's, I mean, everything is based on mind control. And so, 
gosh, you know, if we just could snip ourselves away from it or just step back from it and just reprogram ourselves to really just serve our dreams, our visions, our passions, Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just just push the envelope and what we can achieve and what we can accomplish and what we can tap into and what we can manifest. It's like we're we're home free when we can get to that point. It's just getting there, which is tough. And mm-hmm. this whole ego thing is the tipping point. It's either in service to spirit or it's, you know, being led astray and it's and it's um lost in the negative aspects and the duality of either being totally full of the self or completely powerless and totally in victimhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. And and do you think there's potential for any of these guys who work in these covert groups to turn around and become more light conscious oriented and shift gears or what? I'm always going to hold out hope and light for that. And, you know, and, and it's important just to always, you know, maintain forgiveness and some level of understanding and, you know, to see the earth and just the whole of creation is just a big organism, just like our physical bodies, you know, with mm-hmm. all the different systems we have and different organs that are so diverse, they all have to work together. And, you know, even if a part of our body's not in good health, um, we wouldn't want to give up on our liver, right? Or our heart if it's not doing good. And it's, you know, if we can take away just the resentment of, I can't believe they're doing this to us, and we can start to see it more like, okay, well, it's our unconscious energy that's actually enabling it because we're not empowered enough to, you know, stand our own ground and be in in a position of leadership ourselves. Well, we can't really point blame if if we're not understanding what we need to you know, step into. And of course, you know, there's been a lot of manipulation and it's understandable, you know, that we're, there's anger because we are sort of born into, um, all of this without having much of a chance to remember who we are. It's like the manipulations happen like immediately, Mm -hmm. but if we can kind of drop that part of it and look at it more, um, like we would our physical body, knowing that when we're in balance, it's easier to, to deflect parasites and germs and bacterias. And when we're, you know, in harmony and we're functioning from our higher self, our bodies, you know, come into balance and all our organs and systems work harmoniously together. And we could adopt that same, awareness to, to, to the collective and to the wholeness of creation and just know that what we do for ourselves individually and how it can, you know, spread and become contagious to where other people are like, Hey, I feel that. Let me do that too. And, 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 you know, then we're not unconscious anymore. And then there's nothing for all these things to feed on. Right. And it's kind of like, this is what we see in nature when, I mean, as unnatural it is, as it is to have artificial intelligence, there are things that feed on, things that are out of balance. I mean, that's just, that's just a given. I mean, we see that every day in our physical lives. If our negative ego is running the show, we create disasters. We lose Mm -hmm. partners. We create catastrophe, even though for a while we were riding on, you know, maybe something that kept us going, some false light that we followed, you know, and, and like I said, if our masculine and feminine are, feminine energies are out of balance, it's easy to manifest illness. So what are we dealing with on a macro level? The exact same thing. And these parasitic forces, you know, have completely, you know, taken advantage of where we are, you know, rehabilitating ourselves because of all these catastrophes that happened in our early ancient history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely a bleed through effect without a doubt. And also that it seems to me like the split consciousness thing where there is that polarization between opposites. And uh, I do like the aspect of the goddess returning and the goddess ascending and, um, and, and regaining that beautiful enlightenment. And uh, so I'm glad you're, you're generating that energy also. So that's very important. Yeah, it it really is because you know our planet. I mean, it's it's a feminine planet, and it is for a reason. Um, it's kind of like a, a holding tank to help us to rehabilitate because the way that the races had to be seated, the root races, which were different than how things were when we were on a higher dimensional Earth, um, you know, was that we would go through this life, death, reincarnation stuff. And and mm-hmm. the goddess gives us the gives us the gift of the zodiac, gives us the gift of you know, the core of this planet, which is 13 dimensional, um, star energy that is multidimensional. You know, she fell into this planet, morphed into this physical planet to help us to return home. The whole planet is like, that's why it's an ascending planet, but it's also massively attacked because, um, first of all, the polarization of it being a feminine planet, but you know, that, that creates the patriarchy, but are linking back to, you know, the divine masculine or the Christ consciousness or whatever anybody wants to call it, brings things back into balance and, and, and reunites heaven and earth, you know? Mm-hmm. And a lot of the myths spoke of this, you know, the, the Arthurian legends and, and the grail stuff is all about the restoration of the land through sacred union. And it doesn't matter the gender. It doesn't matter about having a spouse. It's about your internal balance and the alchemy that creates. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the soul's kind of an androgynous design. So, yeah, it's it's uh, male and female, really, when it boils down to it. But, you know, do you think this planet's going through a type of bardo right now? Or do you think it's, um, at what level do you think this planet is navigating? Like currently? Yeah, like it, is it is it going through a death cycle or a rebirth cycle? Or, or what would you say? Where Where do you think it's at right now? Well, I almost see it, you know, I, I like to think in terms of the collective and everything, you know, sort of happening for one and for all, you know, but I, I, I more see this on an individual level now. I mean, I think we're in a major crisis here in this density that we're in, seeing the skies getting sprayed, mm -hmm. our food getting poisoned, Fukushima, there's no end in sight to that. Um, and so I think that the, the, that holds a, a heavy density in that in and of itself it's kind of like a death cycle and it's um, a phantom earth energy that is bifurcating away from our expansion into higher earth energies. If we're either in denial, we have our head in the sand or we respond with fear and we keep ourselves sort of locked in this reaction mode without understanding that it also can be a major catalyst to our expansion and our recognition of the fact that all it really represents is something trying to have power over us. So let's not give it to them. You know, let's get pissed off. But after that, use that fire to be the fire of your passion and your creative juices and your, your ability to transmute and the ability to, you know, really use that fire for the benefit, not for the detriment. And, um, and so, you know, well, a lot of people speak of bifurcation. And what exactly is that going to look like? It's more sort of like a lucid dreamer. You know, we're dealing with a landscape that's very metaphorical. A lot of stuff is propaganda and very much about sinking our vibration. That's why there's false flags. If it was enough to just spray us with chemtrails, they wouldn't bother with all the false stuff in the media. They wouldn't bother with all the programmings of the masculine and feminine. They would just spray us and it would be fine. So in my view... You know, this is a tool that they use, but it doesn't work if you don't buy into the game. If you do buy into the game, which is all the programming, mm -hmm. then you're 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 immersed in it, and and that is like the trap that closes on the mouse's head. If you don't buy into the programming and you keep yourself, you know, somewhat contained and and protected from it, and you understand the game that's being played, and you respond to chemtrails with empowerment and you know the desire to expand and to unify the human race, then you haven't fallen into the trap and you're witnessing something that is en enabling you to move on and help others move on. Mm -hmm. And that's where the bifurcation happens. And so right now in this window period, it's just important for people to understand the difference um, and not to assume that, you know, understanding conspiracy means you're awake. M being awake is also being, you know, careful with what your reaction is and how you treat others. And, you know, I know all sorts of conspiracy theorists that are very low vibe that treat people like crap that have horrible relationships that are abusive. And it's like, great, you know, conspiracy, but are you really awake? Then I know a lot of higher consciousness beings that won't even look at conspiracy stuff that think it's fear mongering. And it's like, hello, this is love mongering. It's because we care. Um, it's not comfortable so for a lot of people on that higher octave from what I've seen. And that's unfortunate. I understand that. But still, you've got to roll up your sleeves at, at some point and, and dive in and, and um, participate in a positive way, in my opinion. Right, and I and I have so much compassion for that, and on both sides. So it's not like, oh, you know, how dare you not help? And I understand how people are trying to protect themselves from buying into the belief of it. But mm -hmm. you can still be proactive and not buy into the belief that it's going to take you down or crush you. That's right. what I do. And so, you know, I think everybody's got to do what they feel right. And I think that that's the best thing, you know, really at the end of the day is to be a resource of information, to share perspective, insights, and things that will be helpful. But at the end of the day, it's really up to the individual. We have to honor each other's free will. And um, it would be, I guess, you know, sort of hypocritical of me to be like, you should be doing this when I'm like somebody who's saying, I'm so sick of people telling us what to do. But, <laughs> you know, at the same time, it's like, here's some good reasons why one should. And if you don't, great. You know, if, if, it, if it feels like it's working for you, then Absolutely. You know, we have to live and let live, but um, we can certainly do our best to inspire. And I think it's good to just put your foot in both worlds, you know, be expansive, be moving on and just understand that it's not going to crush you, but do your best to help people to see it so that they have the opportunity to make that decision. So they're not being totally duped mm -hmm. and that also they're, they're getting some solutions. You're not just throwing it to them. So they're going to have a reaction of fear, help guide them out of the fear. If you're going to present them the difficult information. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well said again. I totally agree. And, and with that being said, um, do you feel there is a breakaway Black Project space program? And, and do you feel that they've already left this civilization in the dust? Yeah, I feel like there's been a secret Black Project space program for a really long time. Um, 
I think it's just coming more um, out of the woodworks. I mean, the super soldier programs, um, you know, there's, there's, there's life all over uh, this multiverse and there's bases on the moon. There's bases on Mars. I mean, they, that's where they were going to take me. And, um, and then there's, you know, great alien technology that can simulate things that actually aren't real, you know? And so there's a fine line between, okay, what's a simulation that feels real, like a video game almost, and what is, you know, real organic stuff here? And that's that's the difficult part. And people like Andrew Bashago that were in Project Pegasus that my story sort of links to, you know, he teleported and time traveled, and other whistleblowers are st- stepping forward and saying, you know, that gray alien technology, they can simulate realities. Mm-hmm. So he's not even sure he went to Mars at this point. Right. But there is a secret space pro- program for sure, and it's black ops, and um, they've got their hands on some major technology. They can age regress. They can they can do things that are so mind-blowing. They, they <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. And, and with that being said, I mean, we all know that that there is a black space program, but do you think that maybe that's why this planet is being neglected deliberately is because they're already kind of terraformed elsewhere and what's left here they don't seem to care about? Well, the whole deal was um, with alternatives one, two, and three, which seemed to be established during the Eisenhower administration. They were set up and it was part of some agreement with uh, the Zetas, I believe. That had to do with, in the event of catastrophe, you know, the human genome needs to be protected. Well, that sounds great. If you're going to say that to a bunch of government people that are out for our good, they're going to probably say, yeah, that's not a bad idea. It's called patriotic programming. Patriotic programming takes very well-intentioned people and starts to steer them in a direction of something that doesn't really serve us. So what does that mean? They created underground bases and off-planet colonies. They refurbished some things on these planets that are ruins of what used to be there, too, because there used to be life on Mars. Um... And so the ones that are privy to what these agendas are all about don't tell the ones that they want to assist them what's really going on. That's what compartmentalism is. That's why people like Phil Schneider helped create these underground bases and all of a sudden realized what he was doing, started to speak out, and then he got killed for it. Mm-hmm. You know, he, you know, most people are being told, you know, this is to help the human race. This is for the good. This is what my partner was told when he was trying to get us to Mars. This is what they t- probably told Ike when, you know, he was, they were setting him up with these treaties. Or, I mean, I wasn't there. I don't know um, exactly how it went down. But, yeah, I mean, it's to go off planet or into underground bases while they, you know, depopulate or create genocide. I mean, there's two controlling factions here on Earth, the Black Suns and the Sons of Belial, the Luciferians and the Satanists. And I don't see Lucifer as all bad. He, there was a big rebellion, though, and, and kind of like the, the, the remnants of that is not good, but the original energy is. Um, to a certain degree when everything was in its wholeness. So it's not really about the characters anymore, you know, and everybody's got their own association with them. And that's what we need to do is find our own archetypal harmony and understand we're made of all of it. But there is, has been, and is still an attempt to either turn this into a complete and total control and domination, you know, prison planet or wipe out most of the population in order to reseed it again. Mm -hmm. And these are the two competing factions. I understand both of those agendas actually. And I understand the revenge and the rage and the anger, Mm -hmm. you know, but I don't understand it on a level of taking it this far and not finding a better solution. Right. You know, I agree. Yeah. There has to be accountability. And and with that, you know, by universal law, I think they're in violation, quite honestly. Absolutely Um, in violation. And the thing is, you know, it's understandable with some of the things that happened, you know, based on some of the stories that I've heard from the, 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 some of these groups, Mm -hmm. you know, there is a shred of me that does understand why these agendas have been set up. But when you're purposely creating overpopulation for the purpose of enslavement, not so that, you know, these souls are being born and, oh, there's just a lot of us. No, it's like, there's a harvesting happening. There's harvesting of energy, siphoning of energy into artificial timelines. There's so much sick manipulation going on that has nothing to do with the original people that were a part of these wars and battles in our ancient history. It has to do with humans that should not be caught in the middle. That's where my anger comes in. But, of course, I transmuted into the passion to create unity. Oh, it's great. And- I love it. Yeah, you're such a spiritual warrior. <laughs> you're Actually, I resonate with you completely. I'm a lot like that I'm myself, so very interesting. But, yeah, you know, I was thinking you might have been your um, great-grandfather's guardian angel, for all you know. Yeah, I think we've been linked um, throughout just our history, yeah, our past lives. I I feel that. Yeah, it's interesting, for sure. And, um, you know, I I know you're 100% right with your information. I mean, you're you're really um, striking true on so many different things. But insofar as the transhumanism, and that all dovetails right into the control manipulation factor, and also converting what is spiritual into a, a dead machine based communication system. So so what's your impression on that and do you think they'll have any success with that? Well, I mean, 
this is why I'm really hoping it works out that I speak at the citizens hearing disclosure because, you know, I'd love to think something is going to shift on that. And so, well, okay, looks like I'm going to make sure, <laughs> like, I got to do something about this. And, you know, like people like you, you know, doing shows and putting this information out there, you know, we're all, you know, making something happen differently than what could happen if we weren't doing what we're doing. So that's a plus. Um, what I think, you know, I don't think it's going to succeed. That's my positive frame of mind. But, you know, I act as though, you know, the chances are pretty good that they can. So I, I never fall complacent, but I never lose my hope. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like, all right, like a cancer patient, you know that you have to address it, but you don't have to have chemo. You can heal it on a holistic level. It's kind of like that approach. I know that there's an impending threat. I'm not going to freak out. I'm not going to go into doom mode at all, ever. You know, I'm going to do everything I can to transform this and, and do my right. part. Um, but I do feel that everything that we're seeing with geoengineering and the super storms and the false flag of war and 9-11 is all set up to create a scenario where ET races, particularly the greys, are going to come in and they're going to introduce this technology that's been hidden that they've been using to manipulate timelines and they're going to say, hey, here's the solution. We've got the technology to clean up the planet. We're here to help. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to pull people right into the trap. Mm -hmm. And basically those with the scientific breakthroughs and solutions very often are the ones that created the problem. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, the, the leaders with the war on terror with 9-11 are, are, are a perfect example. So it's important that we just educate ourselves as best as possible to understand these different diverse races and groups, what their intentions are, and to, you know, really have discernment and to know the difference because there are going to be some that are here to help, obviously. And it's going to be easy to tell the difference, but for some, when it's presented through disclosure or through governments, that's when they're going to be duped. So mm -hmm. we need to get rid of the middleman and start to, like, look at the people that are having real contact experience that really know the stuff and, um, you know, bypass all these others that have, like, you know... Um, you know, something to gain from it. And that's why they're a part of this or that agenda. We need neutral parties that are saying, this is what it is. This is what it looks like. This is, this is what this represents without any biasness. Um, and, um, you know, understand what's happening because we're going to have, I mean, there's already technologies that can cure cancer. There's already technologies that can cure the radiation. Mm -hmm. You know, if we work with sound frequency and color and the things that the higher, more benevolent races or, or our higher future selves have their hands on, you know, we totally got this. There's motherships. The Venus ships are all over the planet. They couldn't help in the government system, but they never abandon us. I mean, there's a lot of benevolent forces here. So it's like the immune system. Mm -hmm. But then the transhuman agenda to me is like the artificial life support system of the human body, the human species. Mm -hmm. So we either take the route of the immune system and the more holistic approach, or we go on the artificial life support system and we're zombies being run by a machine. Right. And so that looks like a solution, but it's not, you know, and people every day are taking that solution with their health. So those are the people we need to worry about, the ones that blindly trust. Mm -hmm. But okay. those that are more holistic, those that are more sensitive, those that are more in touch with their intuition are going to know the difference and are going to be able to stand up when it's time to help humanity understand the difference. That's why I think the transhuman agenda will fail. But the good technologies that are in harmony with nature will succeed because more of those beings will be promoted and funded and empowered and given a voice. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I call it an imitation life support because that's exactly what it is. It's, it's a false, it's really just such a false reality and so many, on so many different levels. I'm, I'm very much um, aware of what they do with that crap and I can't stand it. But anyways, yeah, I think it's cause and effect. I mean, and you're right. Everything is based on, on frequency and healing and we can heal anything through sound and frequency. And another thing comes to mind, you know, with all of this, and I'm kind of, um, I'm a spiritual warrior, so when something attacks me, I counterattack. And I know maybe that's not the best thing to do. But, you know, for me, I would say... Um, I, I like solutions to the equation, and I like, um, I don't know, I keep seeing the array system falling down, and I don't know what your impression is of that at all, or, or if, if it's even something that you feel as a collective, I think I said this earlier, but to me, it almost feels like action needs to be taken, and that means altering timelines on a higher consciousness level by those of us who are capable of navigating, and I don't, I don't know what your impression is of that. Well, the impression is on what part that you said one word that in the beginning of the question? Um, yeah, well, basically, I, I, it's my take that those of us who are empowered enough to navigate on those higher levels have access to be able to alter a timeline to a point where we can affect a positive change opposed to what they're trying to do to destroy. Yeah, totally. And I love what you said. I mean, you know, counterattacked. Exactly. I mean, I, I would say to the Marjorie Kurs, I'm like, you don't understand. You're creating a monster here. I'm like, you really think like, first of all, they didn't scare me at all. And it's mm -hmm. like, 
everything that they were doing was just making me stronger and making me like <laughs> remember my mission and like oh my gosh like finally like you know, I wanted a showdown. It's like, bring me to the, and I remember as a kid, bring me to the most evil people on the planet so I can deal with them, you know? And I said, use me too to bring balance back. Just use me in whatever way you need. So I've allowed myself in a way to surrender to the adventure that I think, you know, we, we sign up for it before we come, but we can make declarations just to remind ourselves, which I did. And yeah, like, I love what you shared because, and I know that you're made of this too. We absolutely can. And when I refused the Mars thing, I knew that, you know, it was a timeline that would have been a lot more solidified if I had gone. I mean, you know, all the whistleblowers coming out right now make a huge difference. All the shows, you know, what you're doing, what you've survived. I mean, this is what alters the timelines because timelines are like subpersonalities. You know, when we live a life that's not really true to who we are, but we think it's who we are because our, our ego has attached itself to it, that's like an artificial timeline. And it's a belief system that ends up generating a reality that is pretty far off the mark of what's organic and real to us. And the same thing on a macro level, except, you know, they use through the media and through religion and governments and false flags in the news, they use this. Um, and, and of course, you know, Kundalini energy and sexual energy, they, they, you know, siphon this energy and they harvest this energy. And then it fuels these technologies to have control over nature and to keep this, you know, you know, going. And so anytime we pull away from it, <clears throat> we come into alignment with, you know, the organic ascension timeline. And, and that's always there. Nothing can destroy it. Nothing mm -hmm. is more powerful than spirit. And one could call it the divine plan or whatever. I don't think it's much of a plan. I think nature self corrects and is wild. And, um, but it's also ordered like the web of life, but it has to kind of act as things go. It doesn't have like, I, I don't think this has been a real plan. I think it's kind of like, okay, cause it like keep self correcting, keep, you know, modifying, keep working with this. Just like when we live our lives, yeah, there's destiny, but what's destiny? Destiny is being in alignment with your truth. And everything that's on that path is your destiny. When you're not on your path or in your truth, your your destiny is that you'll fall and you'll get back again to what is real. Mm -hmm. And that's, to me, you know, what we're dealing with. Even if we were to divert ourselves or go on a detour and, and experience an artificial timeline, it expires. You know, it's something that can't maintain itself unless we fully sell ourselves to it and become soulless and become completely disconnected and so many of us I don't see myself getting any less sensitive if anything I'm just as triggered I'm just as like filled with fire and passion as ever so I don't feel I'm getting dumbed down at all no, so not at all. gotta watch themselves if you start to like you know because there's lithium and there's all sorts of stuff getting sprayed um mm -hmm. you know and I keep thinking are they spraying people with I don't care about chemtrails like you know some sort of substance because um but this is the thing all of that expires. Spirit doesn't. And so whatever needs to play out is going to play out. So even the worst case scenario, because I know people get really bent out of shape with some of this information. And I like to sometimes say worst case scenario just to clear that and just be comfortable with the worst case. We're still okay because those things expire. They don't have a life force that can run on its own for very long if the soul has an inkling within itself to wake up and notice that something's not right. And once you locate that spark everything changes and and then all of a sudden you know it starts to grow it starts to blossom like a seed and it becomes you know like over time it 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 it, it takes on a life of its own it just needs sunlight and water which is our own attention and our own nurturing of it mm -hmm. i like to say you know if you devote yourself to it that's all that it takes you don't have to do it perfectly you don't have to be perfect a divinity path has nothing to do with perfection. It has to do with being genuine, being authentic, being real, falling down on your face, getting back up again. That's the fool card. It's the zero card. The closest to God's source is the fool because it doesn't need to apologize. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to follow some, some dogma or religion to, to be close to God. It, it just knows that if it falls down, it gets back up again, and it's all the wiser. Mm -hmm. And so – even if we get majorly diverted, as long as we stay in touch with ourselves, we'll get all the right triggers and urgencies and feelings like this isn't right, you know, that we need. And also all the crises we could possibly want or need to help wake us up. Mm -hmm. I think crisis and adversity is the greatest blessing ever, you know, and, and if people can shift their perspective, they'll gain from what we're going through right now. Oh, absolutely. It's a wake up call. And of course, the cells and the atoms resonate with universal harmonics. So that once again, we, we go back to the same ocean, you know, to source. I mean, in the end of ends and the illusion of time, we'll go home. And, and I think that's really important. And I always uh, run that energy too, because I always trust the universe. That's the only time I let go of the wheel is when I, when I, when I let my higher, higher self just let go and just trust source, then everything works out accordingly. But yeah, to give your power to these mechanisms and these artificial machines, and, and they're just empty. I mean, there's no soul, there's no spirit involved. And, uh, 
you know, maybe it is just a learning lesson for everybody, but at the same time, it's time for us to stand up and be counted. And I'm glad you're doing that. And I certainly am. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's too much is at stake right now. And it's like, you know, why, why not pay attention and, 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 and just at least educate yourself. I mean, even Mm -hmm. if it just turns you off, just look into it for God's sake. I mean, there's nothing that you're going to look into that you're not going to find some kind of expert opinion when it comes to chemtrails and geoengineering and GMO labels are everywhere. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's at a point where, I mean, it's staring people right in the face and I can understand the denial, um, and how painful it is to have everything, you know, kind of break down to need to be rebuilt again. But I think it's the most liberating, awesome thing ever. But I think, you know, it's different because people like you and me who maybe didn't pay attention in school, this is like, yes, I knew that I was onto something. Whereas people that like completely immersed themselves in it and, and got the degrees and followed the American dream and got that corporate job and made their family happy. They're like, what the F? They uh-huh. don't want to, you know, face this stuff. But it's easy for people like you and me. It's like, ha, oh, finally, you know, people are starting to pay attention. Yeah, it's adding up. It's really interesting. You know, when I was a little kid, my first day of kindergarten, I got in the car. My mom picked me up and I said, that's it, mom. I'm quitting. <laughs> and I knew I was in trouble then. <laughs> oh, but I, awesome. I was so not into school. I loved music and science, but I was really, I just, I could see the matrix of that whole uh, prison, you know, in the illusion of. Oh, yeah. Totally, that me too. I was not resonating with it at all. But yeah, I think that um, we, we do come here with a purpose on, on many different levels with our divine ascension blueprint. And uh, I guess it's rocking and rolling and in motion now, huh? Yeah, we totally knew what we came into. And, and that's the thing, you know, we can be shocked all we want, but we wouldn't. I mean, we, we, we wouldn't be creating the synchronicities that we are. We wouldn't be, you know, connecting with the familiar souls that we're connecting with and, and, and having it all kind of come together and make sense if, if this wasn't something that we um, have been working for a long time, that has been prearranged, that we're completely aware of what we're stepping into. And, um, you know, we're just moving away from that temporary amnesia. But once we start to really wake up, then it's like it's all downhill from there because it just, it really does come naturally. Mm-hmm. Once you drop the stuff that you're attached to that doesn't serve you at all. And you just really connect to, you know, what counts and what's natural and what's real. It, it's really no effort from that point forward. You just got to show up and be yourself, you know, mm-hmm. but you have to figure out who the self is first. Oh, exactly. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Yeah. That's so awesome to talk to you tonight. And also um, you also have a wonderful show called awake in the dream, right? Yes, um, that's uh, Tuesday. My partner does Monday night at 6 to 7. He does an essential oil radio show, which is really, you know, helpful because it's, you know, earth medicine and Mm -hmm. it's just high concentration of, you know, these different plants. And I've used them. I thought I was coming down with like more gallons. I'd been on the road. I ate the worst food and Mm -hmm. I was like breaking out. I mean, it was just weird. And it wasn't like major, major more gallons or whatever. I mean, it could have been limes. I was Googling everything. Um, It just said no, not to go into fear about it. And then, uh, you know, I took some oregano oil for a week and totally cleared the symptoms. But, I mean, I was noticing things that people were blogging about and talking about that, like, could, you know, potentially be something like that. And every time I use oils for something as severe as some of those things that we read about, you know, it really does take care of it. Um, so I didn't mean to give a huge spiel about that. I don't know why that came up. I think up. that's but, great, yeah. But, for yeah, for anybody who's dealing with wacky symptoms and things connected to chemtrails or the food you're eating, get – really into essential oils. It really, really, really does help. Um, so he does that show just to give great tips and information. And then we do Tuesday nights at six, him and I with a guest for two hours. And then, um, Wednesday nights at six, uh, it's him and I, um, just an hour, just him and I talking about whatever is relevant for us. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I'm a firm believer in essential oils also. Do you make your own? Um, he does blends. Um, I used to work with herbs and make tinctures and, you know, lots of teas, but I never, you know, really got into the oils. So, but we have, you know, a lot of doTERRA and, um, Young Living, which are therapeutic grade. And, uh, but I'd love to, you know, make our own eventually, oh, but yeah. the therapeutic grade is really important because you can ingest it and they're mm-hmm. just great. I've got a whole bunch right next to me right here right oh, now. Excellent. And yeah. Have you tried the gem elixirs? Mm-hmm. Oh, I love those. I used those to take those all the time. And um, I haven't in a long, long time, but I really, really like those. Those are great, yeah. So. Yeah, Once it's so fun, you know, once one gets in the flow. Like, there's a few things that I still need to kind of, like, jump into and, and to get in the flow on. Mm-hmm. But once, you know, the ball gets rolling, it's so nice to see, you know, it gets really easy because your body just feels so much better. And it's just like, oh, my gosh, you know. Exactly. Well, it craves those energies and those harmonics as far as I can tell. I know my body does for sure. I, mean, I, yeah. love, I love light and photons. I love photon energy. I mean, yeah, I'm like a little creature sometimes. <laughs> it's, it's really funny. Uh, can you talk a little bit about our galactic family and true origins? 
Yeah, well, um, true origins. I mean, there's definitely like founder races. You know, there's the seeding of life in the time matrix that came from you know Lyra and um, and basically, gosh, when you think about it the divine blueprint that we're all made of and just the pleroma, the Godhead, you know, what is that? The Trinity. I mean, it almost sounds religious, but when we kind of step away from whatever religious programming, because what they do is they use things that are close to the truth and they distort it. Mm-hmm. And then we get turned off by the terminologies and then we're just completely like, but you know, if we think about it, the mother, father energy, when they're in union, create this magical child or Christ consciousness. When we step down, um, dimensional levels because of free will in this particular universe which is a free will universe the masculine and feminine energy got um, more differentiated which produced the egoic energy you know which is self and the self has the choice to be in unity or to be in duality and in this free will universe there's been different beings and species that have made those choices the first three founder races were much more in the unity and much more an emanation of the dreaming creator energy. You know, we hear about the Shiva Shakti, the Brahma, and, you know, all the, you know, the creator, the destroyer. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, this is sort of like a, in a more metaphorical sort of creative dreaming sort of way. Um, and um, much more about kind of the recycling of energy, but not like the destruction of, of races or like the misuse of free will. Mm-hmm. And when that started to happen because of the, of, of the masculine and feminine becoming more split, the Luciferian energy that seemed to come out of it um, incarnated through the reptilian lines. And it was just, one has to look at it as a portion of it because there's a lot of fallen angelics and a lot of fallen races, even Thoth and, you know, Michael and all these archangels and all these so-called ascended masters have also, you know, dealt with this sort of thing. And then we can, you know, start to see that there's fragmentations of them, some that have been um, <clears throat> sort of uh, brought into, you know, the dark shadow side of the self. Mm-hmm. And the, the light side still remains, but <clears throat> it's our job. To understand that our origins are based on archetypal imprints that we inherited, just like we inherit biological um, stuff from our biological parents. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, my mom used to raise her voice, so therefore I might raise my voice. But I do have the free will choice to say, hey, I don't like that. I'm going to change that or, you know, take it on and even make it worse. And so when we're dealing with, you know, founder races and, and, and just sort of like everything more in harmony and these reptilian races that were, you know, working with humanity and looking over humanity, eventually there ended up being a competition with that in this free will universe. And of course, in a free will universe, it's inevitable. Some people think it's a huge error and mistake like the Gnostics, and that's great. I love Gnosticism, but I, 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 could, I don't see where it could be called an error if it's a free will universe. Of course, we're going to see what duality is like. Of course, there's going to be all sorts of curiosity and divergence and, um, and this sort of thing happening. Mm-hmm. But it got out of control, and the service to self, I guess you could say, ended up being the um, intention of some of these races. And so they attacked Lyra, killed millions of them. And um, what ended up happening is there was uh, a new seeding of a race called the Orophim, which are holding DNA from the energy matrix of the Pleroma of the Godhead. And that's where the races of Atlantis and Lemuria came from, and also the Grail lines and the angelic humans. And... um, in rebellion to that, because they held a um, higher uh, DNA potential, which meant that they could have the power of, I guess you could say, the creator. Mm -hmm. Um, They rebelled because they realized that they didn't have that. And because they attacked these... um, the Lyra system, <clears throat> it is almost like they were paying the price, mm-hmm. but they didn't realize or they do know, I mean, they have the opportunity to incarnate into those higher lines, but they ended up choosing rebellion instead and ended up, um, after Atlantis and Lemuria sank, putting a technology in place called the Nephilim reversal grid, which, um, does a reverse spin on our Merkaba. Mm. And it's like what's keeping us stuck and what's keeping us in disease and all this. It's a rebellion. And, uh, Gosh, I'm not really explaining this very well, but the whole point is the founder races ended up bringing in <clears throat> a diversion, um, and 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 the first of the founder races to fall were the seraphim, and the seraphim um, are the reptilian energies that are connected with the Luciferian agenda and the reptilian agenda, which is based on the rebellion, and um, along the way, you know, this these these this higher race was seeded, and the Anunnaki was created in in um, 
in the intention of destroying them. Mm-hmm. And that's why we're all under attack. So when we think about the Anunnaki, they're not all bad. There's, there's good and not so good factions, mm-hmm. but it does mean, you know, those who came from the heavens. And so one could say, okay, the watchers or the archons, archons mean ruler. And so basically what we're dealing with on the largest of scale is that everything started off in harmony and in unity. And because of free will, things ended up splitting and, sort of the egoic service to self mentality came in and wanted control over humans and was in competition with God's force. Mm-hmm. And um, in response to that, a higher race was created. And in response to that, the Anunnaki was created to destroy them. All this ended up getting stepped down to the point of, you know, planets exploding, which became the asteroid belt, Tiamat and Maldek, mm-hmm. um, which are a part of the asteroid belt. And actually all the archetypes we see in the Zodiac and all the archetypes we see in the Tarot deck are all the fragmented aspects of the original trinity Mm -hmm. so when we work with the tarot and we work with astrology we're basically learning about all these different fragmented aspects of ourselves and when we unify them and integrate them all the good all the not so good and we embrace all of it our light and our dark we're actually restoring our inner trinity which ends up you know as above so below but also as below so above Mm -hmm. we end up sorting out these archetypal inheritances that we have taken on and instead of waiting for them to sort it out we take it upon ourselves knowing that we're the inheritors Mm -hmm. so it's like our like i said with our biological parents we can either you know enable and continue what was passed down to us based on what we are exposed to or we can take it to a higher level and we're being asked as a human race to not blame but to hold ourselves responsible and to do the energy work within, knowing we're made of all these different creative forces, mm-hmm. and to come into alignment so that um, we can stop the duality or stop the war that's happening. I explain that so terribly. I, I do no, slideshows didn't. and um, PowerPoints <laughs> that have it all mapped out like really, really well. But I know it kind of goes over people's head, but I think you, they get or you probably totally understand what I'm saying mm-hmm. about all these fragments. Right. It's almost like a soul retrieval, too, when you're pulling all those little um, fragments in and and recalibrating everything, it seems like, anyway. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, based on, you know, a free will universe, you know, it's split into two, service to self, service to others. Mm -hmm. Service to others doesn't mean you neglect yourself. I mean, that's a farce, and I think people get a little bit lost in that. But it means that you you don't use free will at the expense of others. You don't manipulate. You don't just murder for the sake of murder. You know, but at the same time, because in a free will universe, that's kind of inevitable, the watchers and the founder races were not going to intervene at all. They were going to let it sort of play out. But then it got to a critical point where all life in the time matrix almost got destroyed, and that's why they created that higher race but there was a rebellion to that higher race and that's why the indigos and the crystal kids are targeted that's why these technologies were put in place Mm -hmm. because there are also hybridization attempts to heal these races um, which were the nephilim but then the nephilim got infiltrated by the dark faction of the anunnaki and the reptilians which is why there's trauma-based mind control because they were supposed to be a ruling elite for the good you know, to be kind of guardians to sort of help this rehabilitation process, but then they got infiltrated. And uh, every attempt that the good side tried to do was rebelled against. And at this point, we got to embrace the light and dark and understand, like, okay, you know, we, we hold both forces within us. What side are we more than likely on? And if we're on one side, embrace the other side. Mm-hmm. Embrace the other side of the coin and find some sort of way to come to grips with um, both good and bad, light and dark, and um, you c- create resolution because... Uh, There's a lot of resentment, you know, because Mm -hmm. of the planets that blew up. And there were a lot of displaced beings that lost their home planet. And so a lot of those beings, you know, ended up getting angry. So there was about three rebellions, the Luciferian Rebellion, the Leviathans that were really angry that their planet exploded. And then um, the Anunnaki, or excuse me, the... um, Which one did I say? The Luciferian Rebellion, the the Leviathan, and then... uh, the rebellion that, you know, simply just has to do with, you know, having the human race wiped out, right. you know. Mm-hmm. And I've heard also that there are, um, depending on frequency, at some point in the continuum, now these, either the ones who don't have any connection to source and choose a different path or reality will break off and and, and, and a separate universe will be created that will be for them. And then the uh, higher overtones, the higher celestial beings um, will, will navigate in another universe. Have you heard anything like that? Yeah, the bifur- yeah, that's the bifurcation I was sort of talking about. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people describe it, you know, differently. Um, I was reading a lot of the Hidden Hand material, which I think some of it rings true, that, um, you know, this harvesting that's been taking place, you know, that 
the darkness on the planet, the negative polarity, um, people were contracted to keep that negative polarity going. For us to be able to remember who we are, we almost had to see who we're not. And there's some light beings that took on the evil role for a specific reason. And, of course, there's some that just are the evil role and they don't know anything different and they just they can't really be changed or altered. They're just demonics that are just completely cut off and they're just sort of a byproduct like archons. They're inorganic. They're just, you know, kind of a, a different thing. But the whole deal with that was that around this window period there would be a negative fourth density planet for the dark beings to work off their negative karma and that there would be a um a higher uh planet um higher fourth density planet for all those that have graduated and are now you know moving up the ladder i guess you could say of um vibrational energy closer and closer to source um that would then go into fifth dimension now from what I've heard from people that I think have the top-notch information, like Lisa Renee, the, the 5D timeline has been completely and totally hijacked. Mm -hmm. That's not even, like, available anymore. So um, not quite sure what that looks like for us. I do understand I've gotten a lot of weird mail from people, you know, from the Giza pyramid um, where the particular Stargate is that they um, – if they damage that one, the twelfth Stargate, then yeah, okay, that that's that's the hijacking, and people have confirmed that they've done this. Mm -hmm. But because we're multidimensional, we can bypass this. And you just said it not too long ago that the navigation of beings like us and others who kind of know this and and aren't limited by any bit of news as far as like oh we're doomed because there is no duality, there is no such thing. Not when you're dealing with spirit, mm -hmm. that we'll work ourselves around anything. Oh yeah, we'll punch a hole right through it. Yeah. <laughs> Happy to do so. Yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt. And can you believe we're almost ready to wrap this up? It's unbelievable here. But um, I think I have one more question and then uh, we'll get ready to wrap it up soon. It's been such a pleasure to have you on tonight, Laura. It's incredible. I hope to have you back. It's awesome. I'd love to come back. And yeah. thank you. And I know, you know, everybody's kind of got to take these answers with a grain of salt. It's kind of like archaeology. There's always gray areas, you know, trying to put the pieces together. We just, you know, do our best with our intuition to put the dots together. But of course, you know, I'm all about free thinking. Just let this trigger you to do research or find out, you know, the answers yourself. But I've studied this for years and years and years. And um, in my presentations, I feel like I've gotten pretty darn close, but mm -hmm. it, it, it's a tough one to articulate. Oh, absolutely. And it's very complex. I mean, we're, we're dealing with multidimensional consciousness in so no. many different forms. And uh, yeah, this is the fast track for everybody. So yeah, and there's an archive so they can check it again. But uh, and so far as the military industrial complex goes, um, what do you feel is the real beast? behind the machine controlling that false matrix well that's the nephilim reversal grid i believe that's yeah. the um the fallen elohim um and that was the other rebellion um you know there's so many i mean we're all individuals we all have our own stuff to rebel against but you know when you kind of narrow it down as far as like the big differentiations of groups i would say that the military industrial complex relates mostly to the follow, fallen elohim which ended up joining in um, the Luciferian Rebellion. It was all about the time when Atlantis sank, and the Nephilim Reversal Grid um, is headquartered in. Its headquarters are in uh, below Stonehenge, actually. And what it does is it infects the ley lines and keeps spiritual marriage from being able to happen, our own inner union from being able to happen. And so this led to the whole kind of war machine of the Nazis, the Zionists, and you know these uh, the the shadow government, you know totally in secrecy, kind of like playing with uh, the human race and putting pawns out there as leaders in order to make the human race believe that we are at war, that, you know, there was some sort of, you know, constitution and just fight for our, our freedoms. And most everything in our history has been a facade because mm -hmm. underneath it all is really what I believe the military industrial complex to be. And what Ike warned us about was the deeper, deeper layers of it that are much less about humans and much more about some of these hidden technologies. Mm -hmm. Because these wars, when you think about it, they're not just, you know, let's go shoot them up. I mean, they were dealing with, you know, Hitler was dealing with alien technology. And, um, Mm -hmm. And and now we've seen with Project Paperclip all these Nazi scientists coming into America, these technologies have, are being used, and now the war is on consciousness and it's mind control mm -hmm. with some false flags in the news and some of the wars still going on that have to do with Stargates and have to do with the larger battle of the planetary Stargates, which of course relate to timelines, our own DNA, and our ability, you know, as a planet to expand and open up the uh, portals to other dimensions and other star systems. And so, that's the military-industrial complex is is basically um, the warring factions, the controller groups that are trying to have control over the Earth Stargates. Mm -hmm. And another term for it is the quest for the Holy Grail 
from the dark side, not, you know, the Arthurian quest or the quest on a human soul level to find that. It's the quest to have total control over the Stargates. And so a lot of the myths and the histories have been distorted in order to serve that. Um, and that's why it all turned into these external symbols like, oh, it's just a cup that or, you know, that Christ bled in or, something. you know, and it's like mm-hmm. it gets people further and further away from what's inside. And the Ark of the Covenant, you know, is another thing happening right now. Um, which relates to all of this. And that was um, basically a portal to bring in higher beings to birth into this lower density earth because they couldn't incarnate here without that assistance. Mm-hmm. But now that's in the dark beings' hands. Maybe not, though, because it's it's there, there's so much to it and who knows, like, what is what. It takes so much inner work just to create the discernment to know what facts are real. Mm-hmm. But um, there's a big thing about, you know, the Ark of the Covenant right now because it stores the sphere that's supposed to be in the core of the earth that keeps the vibration high and keeps this as an ascending planet and that's been um that has been needed to be removed on a constant basis from the core of our planet and put in this ark of the covenant and that's why there's been so many uh quests for these things Mm -hmm. but we have to understand that it's all internal you know if we keep making it about the technology or the or, or us having the technologies or them having the technologies then we're you know externalizing our consciousness to the point of forgetting that if we don't get in touch with what's inside, you know, we can't be playing chess here and see who wins. We got to get out of who wins and who loses and take it upon ourselves to say, you know what? I win. I'm Mm -hmm. the Ark of the Covenant. I'm the Grail. All of us, every single one of us, all 12 tribes that were seated are angelic human lines. Mm -hmm. The controller groups though, that were around before these, these, these lines were seated are the ones that are playing tug of war with our souls. Oh, absolutely. So well said. I can't, that was just awesome. Yeah, and the intent is pure. And once again, if their intent isn't pure, I can't see how they could easily navigate with these archives of data, even if they're um, if, they, if they're stolen something, you know. So it's another thing to look at. But I do want to thank you again for being on tonight. It's awesome to have you, and I hope to have you back soon. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in at Revolution Radio tonight. Chat room, everybody, listeners, thanks for tuning in. And join me next week when my special guest will be Betsy Lewis. And, of course, stay tuned for the awesome duo and show, Shiny Side Out with David Dunger and Mackie, coming up next to sell you on into the night from down under – and anything else you'd like to add? We've got like a few minutes left. Laura? Oh, gosh. You know, just empowerment, empowerment. You know, um, there's so much information. There's so many things to share. And, you know, remember, truth is is what's within. There's a lot of different ways to tell these stories. There's multiple timelines. There's multiple dimensions. There's a lot, um, you know, there. But when you look at the basic patterning, and the basic story from the largest, pers- you know, the larger picture perspective and how we're immersed in it, you know, it's really simple because we each have a unique, you know, astrological wheel. And I just want to say to people that if you're ever interested in getting a reading to understand how your personal map works to get you into the center of that wheel, into that zero point energy to graduate from this time loop that we're in and to be anchored on the Ascension timeline, um, look me up. And if you have any questions about anything I shared in this interview, feel free to ask because I like to make myself available. I certainly don't want to confuse anybody. But my big goal is to really turn it back on the person to become self-responsible, to know what you're made of, and to know that nothing is greater than you. And um, we're going to make it. Awesome. Very well said. And with that, we're ready to sail on out of here. Thank you again, Laura. It's been a pleasure, and I hope to talk to you very, very soon. Everybody, Thank you. Yeah, and everybody have a great weekend, and I will see you next week. 